everyone welcome once again to Anderson podcast series everything tax and today here we are to discuss and dissect the ministerial decision 97 that talks about compliance requirement with respect to transfer pricing that is applicable to UAE businesses so today here with me is Sarthak Juneja who is just managed tax to discuss the ministerial decision 97 of 2023 so Sarthak welcome on board and help us understand what this ministerial decision 97 has to offer to UAE businesses thank you Anurag for having me Uh, the Minister Decision 97 talks about transfer pricing compliance requirements for taxable persons who are having transactions with related parties or their connected person. So very briefly, the conditions that are prescribed for a taxable person to comply with these requirements are if that taxable person is having a revenue of AD 200 million or that taxable person is a part of a multinational group who is having a consolidated revenue of AD 3.15 billion. I think that's very interesting because... If we see the global businesses and global uh, tax authorities out there, they have a very small limit to allow businesses to adopt to the principle of BAPS and to abide by the arm's length principle. However, the UAE authorities has given a quite extensive limit of 80-200 million friends to comply with the requirement. But how does it matter? What happens if you do not meet the threshold? Are you not required to follow the arm's length principle? Friends, as for the UAE corporate tax law, every business is required to adopt arm's length principle whenever they have a dealing along with related party and connected person. And the same principle have been laid out into VAT regulations as well. Now, what it differs, how does it matter that if you do not have the threshold limit of 200 million, it means that you is still required to maintain the arm's length principle, though you may not be required to report those transactions to the authorities. Sathak, what all these uh, conditions specifically means for UAE businesses with respect to the disclosure requirement and compliance requirement? What all these requirements are? Right. So this ministerial decision also talks about the documents that are supposed to be maintained if the taxable person is satisfying either of the conditions as we just discussed. So basically, they are required to file three set of documents. The first one being a disclosure form. The second being a master file. And lastly, a local file. That's quite interesting. So disclosure form, I believe, is all to define and explain the tax authority that you meet the threshold. And master file and local file obviously talks about transactions. Right. Now, when we talk about master and local file, what kind of transactions and what kind of, uh, you know, the, the parties that with you do the transactions are required to be maintained in these, in these documents? So this ministerial decision 97, it requires the taxable person who is uh, having transactions with a related party and connected persons to include the following transactions which are prescribed. Uh, any transaction with a non-resident, any transaction with an exempt person, any transaction with a person who is claiming relief of small-scale business, uh, and lastly, any transaction with a resident person who is subject to a corporate tax rate other than that of the taxable person. Perfect. I think that's very, very important vital condition that has come out in ministerial decision because until now, until now, we were not tracking about somebody else eligibility. So when it comes to VAT, when it comes to economic substance regulation, when it comes to excise, people were not required to maintain other person's status to claim the exemption. However, now the UAE businesses, when they start doing the transacting transactions with the related party or the connected person, they need to ensure before they start a particular transaction, they need to understand the stature and the status of that taxable person along with which they are going to do the transaction. So with respect to exemption, with respect to uh, small business relief, with respect to the rate of tax that somebody is eligible, or their residential status they need to maintain while they're doing the transactions. That's very important. Is there any sub, uh, is there any exclusions that we need to talk about uh, when it comes to ministerial decision? Does it exclude any any person from the compliance requirement? Right, Anurag. So uh, the ministerial decision 97 is also talking about an exclu exclusion list. Uh, this exclusion list basically includes any transactions that a taxable person is having with a resident person other than the one who, which has been prescribed in the inclusion list. It means, uh, it means you're talking about any resident person which is not connected or, or related party. So that need not to be maintained right. in local master file. Yeah, right. That's important. Then another exclusion is there. Uh, any transactions with a natural person provided that the parties are acting as if they are an independent party to each other. I think this is very important point out there when we talk about independence, how to determine that independence. So 
the the ministerial decision talks about that independence as to a state whereby they are doing the transaction in normal course of business there is no specific control that have been devised over a particular transaction that can alter its arms length price and that can influence the because of relationship yeah so what are the other conditions yeah. are there so another connected uh, exemption it is for a juridical person who is a partner of an unincorporated partnership again provided that the parties are uh, acting as if they are independent of each other so i think independence is a critical right. critical element that plays a vital role when you're doing the transaction with a related or connected person and uh, within the uae itself and is there any other specific condition yes there is one last exemption uh, it is for a permanent establishment of a non resident person who is subject to the same corporate tax rate as of that taxable person we are talking about which means again there's a there's a a particular element that comes out there uh, when it comes to uh, the transaction with other parties even the non resident when we are doing the transaction we also need to understand what is the rate of tax that applies to them in order to abide by so when i when i look into the entire uh, ministerial decision 97 it talks it simplifying the requirement for a lot of businesses at the same time it's providing lot much weight on the compliance and kyc that a uae business required to do when they're entering into transaction with a related or connected person it is very evident that such practices of kyc need to be adopted which will gonna add a little bit of more administrative version on the uae businesses uh, sarthak i want to ask you one one simple thing in in your tax career you have seen a lot much uh, you know uh, litigations happening around how much weight of that litigation you going to put together on uh, on transfer pricing uh, a lot actually because uh, in in a, you know uh, in a region like ua you see a lot of transactions happening between the connected persons or the related parties and uh, wherein uh, the tra- the markup charge by th- like from the related party that that matters a lot so it it's going to play a very crucial role uh, in the coming uh, future and then so so friends i think um, here from the key takeaway for me uh, from a ministerial decision 97 is that ua businesses need to ensure the right kyc at the very outset of entering into the contractual obligation or a transaction in order to abide by the transfer pricing requirements of compliance transfer pricing is a very litigated matter and it appears to be at later stage when the transaction is even completed or at later stage when the transaction is been completely settled you know after number of years afterwards so i i recommend each one of you to ensure that you are taking a due care with respect to kyc in order to 100% abide by the transfer pricing regulations thank you so much for watching us stay tuned for more updates on corporate tax vat esr and excise thank you so much